Hey everyone, welcome back to the Respiratory Therapy Resource Center. I appreciate you clicking on my video today. So if you could do me a favor and just subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it so I can continue making videos just like this one for your continued enjoyment. Have a great day. Bye. Hey everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day today. So today's video is about spontaneous breathing trials, how to assess the eligibility of a patient, how to do the trial, and then how to do the respiratory mechanics at the end. Don't forget to check out respiratorytherapyrc.com for any updated ebooks that I think you guys might like. Let's begin with the eligibility assessment. What are you assessing exactly, right? So you wanna make sure they're on reasonable vent settings, they're not on super high FiO2, super high peeps, they have a reasonable PF ratio, their morning x-ray or their trending x-rays look good, their ABGs look good, the trend of the ABGs look good. Make sure they're not tachypnic, they have a respiratory rate within normal limits. Make sure they're hemodynamically stable, they don't have a bunch of pressors on, they have a stable blood pressure and a stable heart rate. Also make sure they'll be able to keep a patent airway by not having tons and tons of secretions, okay? Keep all of those things in mind. Disqualifiers, if they have a low hemoglobin less than five, that is not a 100% hard no, but that is definitely something to think about and consider and bring up to the healthcare team. Hypothermia protocol is a dead set no, you're not gonna SBT them because they already had some kind of heart attack, some kind of stroke, some kind of post code event where they're doing hypothermia because they have better outcomes when they cool down the body after an event like that, you are definitely not gonna do an SBT when they're on hypothermia protocol. When they're on ECMO, they're on extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, that is a hard no. Hemodynamic instability, if they have lots of pressures, low blood pressure and an unstable heart rate, you do not wanna do it, right? Definitely take all of these things into serious consideration before starting a spontaneous breathing trial. Now, let's say they pass, right? You can start the spontaneous breathing trial on pressure support or tube compensation. If you're gonna do pressure support, you can do pressure support of 10 over five or five over five and make sure they're already like on a lower FiO2, right? Tube comp always has to be at 100. That's compensating for the resistance of the tube and you always want that to be 100% compensated, right? You want PEEP of five and you want an FiO2 less than 50 Again, suggesting that they're gonna be okay. They don't, they're not on an FiO2 of 100, right? That's totally unreasonable to be doing an SBT on a patient who's on 100%. So these are your options. Now, pressure support versus tube comp really just depends on your institution. Some places are okay with just doing a pressure support trial or doing tube compensation because tube compensation is technically more representative of how they're gonna breathe without an ET tube, right? So it just depends, follow your hospital's policies and procedures and consult with the healthcare team and make sure everyone is on the same page. Watch for these during the trial, the vital signs, the respiratory rate, the tidal volume on the vent, the minute ventilation on the ventilator. You wanna make sure all of these are in a good range and you set your alarms appropriately so that if their volumes drop or their respiratory rate goes up that you are gonna be notified by the vent, you're gonna have your alarm set appropriately. Apnea alarm needs to be set appropriately, right? 15 to 20 seconds and follow whatever policies and procedures your hospital has for apnea alarms because you need to know if the patient isn't breathing, right? So about 20 seconds on the apnea alarm is somewhat reasonable, okay? So keep all of these things in mind during the trial. Reasons to stop the trial, right? Your patient has continuous desaturations, tachycardia, hyper and hypotension, tachypnea, apnea, right? These are all very good reasons to stop the trial. I once had a patient who was fine. Everything was fine with her. She was calm, she was stable, and then she would just say, I'm having trouble breathing, although she had no other issues or complications, but her blood pressure was high. That was her only vital sign symptom. Her heart rate was fine, no desaturations. She looked fine, she wasn't labored, but she said she was having trouble breathing. So always talk to your patient, make sure they feel okay, because that is a disqualifier, right? You can stop the trial if they're telling you that they're really struggling and if their blood pressure is high, right? So just think about it like that. Hypertension, hypotension can also be reasons to stop the trial. 
Doing respiratory mechanics. Okay, so let's say they pass the trial, you're at the end of an hour or 30 minutes, whichever is your hospital's policy. Now you're gonna do respiratory mechanics. You're gonna do the NIF, which is the negative inspiratory force. You want it to be more negative than negative 20. So negative 20, negative 30, negative 40 are all acceptable ranges. You don't want it to be negative 10, that's not enough, right? So you want it to be negative 20 or more negative than that. RSBI, rapid shallow breathing index, you want that to be less than 106, representing that they have a good frequency to tidal volume ratio, right? So it's frequency divided by tidal volume, that's how you get this RSBI value, representative of if they're tachypnic and pulling low volumes, well then they're not gonna meet that requirement, right? The vital capacity, you want that to be 10 mLs per kg or more. Deep breath in, blow all the air out. That's how you get that value. And you want to make sure the patient is following commands, alert, awake, and oriented times three. Post 30 minutes to one hour ABG, right? So you want to get that ABG at the end of the trial while they are on the trial and make sure you have a representative ABG on SBT, right? You want that, you need that information. And finally, you want to make sure they have a cuff leak, deflate the endotracheal tube cuff, make sure you hear a leak, give them some deep breaths with the ambu bag if you have to in order to hear the leak, okay? So these are the things that you should do at the end of the trial. Gather all your numbers and information, and if they pass, extubate, awesome, they pass, extubate the patient and move them to whatever oxygen modality the healthcare team agrees upon and follow your hospital's policies and procedures. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Have a good one. All right. Thanks for watching. I appreciate y'all taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And if you don't mind taking a minute to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, don't forget to check out respiratorytherapyrc.com. I have some ebooks available you guys might like. So check it out. Have a great day. Bye.